So I've just watched uh, a couple of Thunderfoot's really brilliantly narrated uh, videos about atomic physics and chemistry and biochemistry and how uh, nature sort of scales up from the simple into the more complex. And Thunderfoot even um, provided uh, computer animations that um, beautifully illustrated uh, his uh, narration of the forefront of scientific knowledge um, about nature uh, at these at these scales, um, and so what what Thunderfoot explains uh, to us are the way that um, you know Darwinian biology post post Darwinian biology has come to understand that life is based on uh, chemical replication, um, you know before even the the free living cell you need uh, a form of chemistry that has become self replicative that, that can make copies of itself uh, and so um, persist through time uh, you know and, and we, there, there are also some other requirements like variation um, and uh, inheritance of variation but basically, life is um, chemical replication. Uh, and then Lundeford goes on to explain how uh, chemistry is, uh, is itself based on the way that atoms stick together, um, the way that um, the electron orbitals of uh, these atomic entities interact with one another um, in certain environments. He then um, talks about how atoms are themselves um, based on the way the protons and electrons stick together uh, and neutrons. Um, and, you know, he sort of stops there. you got to start somewhere, right, if you're going to give a, an explanation or an, an account of, of the natural world. Um, but I, I would want to ask, what you know, if we were to go a little bit deeper and say, well, okay, what are these electrons which... Um, exist within these orbitals as wave-like processes um, and what are these these protons which exist in the nucleus of atoms um, and well the electron seems to be difficult to analyze uh, at, a, at a simpler level it seems to be a, a unit um, but the the nucleus protons and neutrons they seem to be composed of what are called quarks with different spins and I think protons have three so we have to ask again, okay, so then what is this quark thing? And I think, you know, in order to provide an ontology for contemporary physics, you know, for our knowledge of the world at this level, um, we need to move away from uh, what, what is called a substance ontology and into what, what is called a process ontology. So, you know, the difference here would be and in a process ontology, we don't ask what nature is made of, like what are the fundamental parts of which all other things are composed. There is no fundamental uh, part, uh, if by part we mean some sort of um, a solid, self-existing entity which requires nothing else other than itself to exist. Uh, if science has, has taught us anything, it's that nature is a system of relationships, uh, and that the relata... Uh, the things being related never exist independently of those relationships. So an atom um, is, from a process perspective, uh, from the perspective of a process ontology, an atom is uh, a relationship among um, really self-replicating uh, rhythms of energy. Um, Nature is fundamentally uh, about rhythm and vibration. That, that's energy uh, is what all things are composed of. Um, matter is uh, a way in which energy comes to organize itself. So, when we when we talk about um, electrons or uh, protons or especially about atoms, we're dealing with emergent um, forms of order. Uh, which we could also call organisms. Uh, we're dealing with self-organizing systems of 
uh, you know, emergent wholes, which don't just are, aren't just sums, uh, summations of their components, but which um, take on new characteristics, which never could have been um, predicted to have emerged out of uh, the prior level of of organization. Um, so new values burst into the universe when uh, the first free living cells are generated out of the um, primordial chemical soup. Um, and, you know, a living cell is said to be living, right? It's alive uh, as a result of of what? I mean, what, what would natural science's answer be to the question, what is life? You know, if, if our science is still presuming um, a substance ontology, that is, if, if our science is still unreflectively materialistic, uh, it would say that we'll, really the question, what is life, cannot be asked. That there is no essence of life. Um, life is just a name that we give to a certain set of physical uh, processes that uh, can more or less be be distinguished but when it comes down to it there's there's really no fine line there's there's just what we are from the materialistic perspective is an especially complex self-replicating chemical reaction right that obeys uh, deterministic laws right the, the physical laws um, are what determine the activity of the universe. That would have to be the physicists, the materialistic physicists' answer. But if we were to ask what is life from um, the perspective of a process ontology, like, say, that of the mathematician, physicist, and philosopher Alfred North Whitehead, um, if we were to ask what is life, life would be a a far more fundamental uh, designation. Um, it, it would refer to any form of emergent organization. Um, it would re refer to the organisms uh, that exist on all levels of nature, from the atomic uh, to the galactic and everything in between. So uh, ecology, in some sense, then becomes the most fundamental science rather than physics, at least as physics has been understood in the materialistic context. Ecology becomes ontologized, in other words. Ecology being that science, science which studies the relationship um, between organisms uh, in environments. And environments here would, would mean other organisms, right? So in um, the ecological uh, ontology, that I'm deriving from Whitehead's process metaphysics here um, would be the study of organisms in their relationships with environments where environment isn't some pre-existing external world of matter uh, or physics and chemistry but rather is um, a world made up of other organisms. So what, what there are really are societies of organisms. Um, organisms ex existing within and among other organisms, right? So all of us are part of the galactic organism, the Milky Way. We are um, elements within its body, um, perhaps organs within its body. Uh, and we have uh, a function in that, in that body. I don't think it's a function that can be determined or was determined in advance. Um, by some uh, supernatural architect or engineer that designed it. Um, but I do think that somehow um, purpose and value and what philosophers call teleology is inherent to, intrinsic to, um, the evolution of the universe. That evolution is itself um, a teleological process. Now, telos is sometimes related to design, the design paradigm, and you have creationists and uh, intelligent design f folks trying to bring uh, the hypothesis of a designer into science. And I think that's entirely uh, 
a confused approach to take to teleology. Teleology can be imminent and not imposed by a transcendent entity. Imminent teleology, teleology which is internal to the process of the evolution of the universe itself rather than imposed from outside, I think is fundamentally creative, non-deterministic, um, open-ended, uh, and full of the pursuit. It, it's, it is the pursuit of um, more intense experience, more aesthetically uh, intense and morally intense experience. That's what the universe mm -hmm. is doing, right? Um, the universe isn't just a collection of externally related uh, um, atoms that are colliding with one another randomly and accidentally falling into certain patterns of, of replication, which accidentally fall into bilipid layers, which accidentally uh, form multicellular organisms with nervous systems capable of having these types of uh, meaningful linguistic conversations, and forming civilizations. Um, unless by accident here you mean uh, something like the way an artist accidentally stumbles uh, into a beautiful painting, the way in which they didn't know before they started their creation, what it was going to become, and afterwards are as stunned by the result of their artistry as um, as someone else uh, viewing it. So, you know, the universe isn't designed beforehand, but is a design is discovered. Uh, by the universe itself as it works itself out. So that in some ways you could say that God, uh, if there be one, is emergent from the universe, the activity, the creative activity uh, and achievement of the universe itself, rather than the universe being uh, a free creation of some pre-existing divine architect. So different images of the universe here. and. Um, Really, I'm trying to provoke a response uh, from Thunderfoot here to talk philosophy um, okay. because I do find the science fascinating and crucial uh, for any deep understanding of reality, but I also think that there are philosophical questions that um, are begged by uh, the way in which Thunderfoot has, has articulated uh, the fundamental facts of uh, scientific knowledge. So um, there it is. Uh, I'd be curious to know what Thunderfoot thinks and what anyone else thinks. Thanks for listening.